show out there in YouTube land. If you can see from behind me, it's nighttime. I, I work out here at nighttime from time to time, and I was getting ready to uh, work on a saw guide for the Frick Sawmill. If you knew the channel, the name Frickin' Jeep comes from the. I, I play with old Frick Sawmills, and I play with old Jeeps. So that's where the Frickin' Jeep came from. If you knew the channel, if you're not new to the channel and you didn't know, that's where it came from. There's probably more sawmilling and splitting wood than there is Jeep, and I, I haven't played with Jeeps too much. A few of the last few videos a month ago, I had some Jeep stuff on there. Anyhow, um, what I'm working on tonight is a Frick saw guide um, for the new sawmill. I've been kind of putting here and there on the new sawmill, but I haven't been videoing much of it, so I just finished cleaning this up. We took it down and glass beaded it in a, the cabinet buddy that I was just at today's house. We sold some logs, which I, I don't know what order I'm putting these in. We we had some good sawmill videos down on a friend of mine's Jeff's sawmill. He's got a real nice sawmill and he's helped me out on mine from time to time. And I was the Eddie at his sawmill, but I was having a hard time because I was still trying to take wood off and do a camera picture and then take wood off and it's just uh, quite quite time consuming to, to make a, a good video so or a decent video or a good video I don't, I don't know anyhow I'm gonna be putting this saw guide together I'm gonna show you the old style saw guide and then this is the one that's red is the new style guide this other one has been beat to death busted up and all that kind of stuff it's not one that was on any of the malt mills it's probably on some mill I've bought I've, I've probably bought in my lifetime uh, six or seven mills probably and sold some of them or kept some for parts still have a bunch of part ones I know I got I got four of them right here on the property right now there's one that's just a double lot for parts there's a double lot one that you see me sawing on all the time and then the number one mill was actually two different mills that I put together because it was cheaper to buy another whole mill than it was to buy a set of axles from Frick that's how expensive those axles are so anyhow I'm going to show you how I think this thing goes back together I might be entirely wrong if I am then leave it in a comment below and let me know I want to show you this old one um, this is the this is the old one. I gotta move this. Now, that's what the old style is. This one here is beat to death. And I wanted to use one of these handles actually on that because that one, that one, um, the new one here was all froze up, rusted solid. I mean, it was it was just one big block of boat anchor. And I've freed everything up and got everything working on it and uh, got it painted now and getting ready to go back together. So this one here, let's see, where can we see? Number one, these things here are supposed to look like this. They're supposed to be made out of, from the best I know, locusts. And that's what, that's what those are. This is, um, I got it clamped down right now. This has all been welded here, brass welded uh, there to make it because uh, it looks like it broke off then we'll turn it around they're right heavy you can see where this has been added on here this is welded up here this is all can you I don't know whether that'll show up all the bronze that somebody put on there because it's cast but all this is all weld through here I'm sure that's all bronze this is bronze they add, added that I guess for strength um, this is all beat to death here, beat to death here. This is improper here. These are not right. Um, this is broke off right here. It's supposed to it's supposed to be captured. Can you see? Check this out. Somebody welded a nut on here. So this thing is this thing is beat to death. It's also uh, when they welded it, they didn't right here. That's not right either. But they ground it down. So this one here is beat to death. It's about the only thing I can see it good for is maybe the trash can, but we'll I'll set it down on the ground because that's going to be just in the way. Ugh. It's right heavy. This new one's right heavy too. So now we're going to try to make an attempt at putting this one, putting this one together. And I might be wrong on some of the parts, and uh, 
might get lucky on some of them be try to get as big as I can so you can see it I as long as I'm on the magic green carpet I think I'll be all right um, this one had the handle broke off of it so I had this handle in a pile of junk this is um, they put a, a half inch bolt through here but there's more threads on it and it comes out this way this is a little tight here but they rang where the bolt went through they wrung it off so I put it on the lay they didn't read it completely off it was just long enough that I get this on and get a press pin on it so I would say that they probably weld this on and the way the shoulder was cut here and here they put it in a lathe and true it up and that goes in this end here so we can put that in first now there's a snap ring like this in there already I put that in there because I needed a bigger snap ring I didn't have and had it down in my buddy's house so I put it in so you want to um, lube the heck out of this this is some old grease that I had laying around for years. I should probably buy a new tube of grease, but you can grease the crap out of this stuff. And it, it's not going to hurt anything. This, this, this isn't even exposed. So I'm going to put this on first, just because I can. Then you got to put, put some grease on this side here where the... Uh, where it rubs inside of here the more the merrier as far as I'm concerned uh, just slop it in there just grease your part just grease the heck out of your part it'll work anyhow so this is gonna go in here like this and you want that to be greased so it doesn't lock up see how tight it is I would have rather had one of those other wheels on there um, now there's another snap ring here that if I'm lucky I can get in here. This is this is difficult to get in here. That's why I wish it was a little bit closer, but or a little bit further away. Um, but I I think I can get it in there. It might be a, a a double try or something. It ain't easy. Ah, there we go. I think it's in. In place, I can let me get a screwdriver and make sure it's snapped in. I think it is, but yeah, so that keeps that solid from going in and out, and that turns good because that, that's uh pretty meaningful later on. Now, to make it look even more legit. I'm gonna take and that's that's all that does is go through there and goes into that part later I want to uh, you got to lube this part in here because that's where that's where they all seem to lock up at so and I was thinking about using anti-seize but I just didn't feel like it now there's another part that goes in here Oh, I can't get it down as far as I want. I think it'll be all right. It feels so good. There's a little, a little brass thing in here. Is what that does is that goes in here. I don't think it'll go through those threads. Maybe it will. Yeah, if it does, I'll, I'll leave it like that. I'll put that in. Um, that keeps you from when you ran the run the set in there. Doesn't gall the, gall that piece there. So we're pretty good this way. Let's see if I can't get this painted up with grease. I'll make sure I get this in real good. And that's where that, down in there, that's where that bolt will go into. This is some thick grease. Uh, plus there's chunks in it, chunks and hunks. This was sitting back at the sawmill in it. I guess the animals ate the cover off of it, so it's <laughs> it looks about yucky. I'll have to show you a picture of that. Damn animals just devoured that. And you can put some grease in here too, it doesn't matter. Like like I said, nothing really gets in here and this is out of out of area. It's just an anti rust thing at this point. Alright. Got it all lathered up good. Oh, shoot, I touched it. 
Believe it or not, this little chunk of steel is heavy. So we'll put it about there, and then you start turning it. All right, if you can see, that's going in as I'm turning this. Excess grease. We'll need that in another spot. So that's going in. I'm going to run it in as far as I can run it in. Well, you don't want to do that when you mount it on. You want to keep it a little bit so you can move it back and forth. But right now, I'm running it in. That should be good. Now, this is that little brass piece. There's a front and back to it because this is already, already you can see the little ring is already kind of boogered up. So we'll put that in there. Then we'll put some good old grease on this bolt. I think I'll push that in. It really doesn't matter how much paint you got in this thing because once you fire it up, all the sawdust is getting dumped there, so it really doesn't matter. It's going to get uh, just denihilated. Now yeah, we'll put some grease on these threads real good because these have to be, these are your saw guide adjustments like the big handles on that uh, other one that I just showed you. Well, these, these turn. What a mess. I should have got a little paintbrush, I guess, or a little acid brush. Alright, now you can put that in, you can put your guide in, and then just start putting that together that way. That's all you do. I don't know that I'm in the cam. I don't know that I'm in the camera. I gotta stay on my magic carpet, don't I? So now you're just putting that in. I guess I should have put some on these threads in here, but I, I didn't think about it. I think I will. I don't care if it pushes them. It pushes it in. Because you don't want these to freeze up from rust. And let me tell you, when the sawdust comes through here, any of this grease is left over is going to get like instead of sandblasting, it'd be sawdust blasting. All right. Well, I'm thinking about it, I'll put some grease on this other one. Yes, it feels so good. And then we'll put the grease on, on this one. And then I'm going to probably clean my hands. I don't think I'm going to get too more greasier. I think I got my wrench over there to run these in. Oh, I got that block on there right now. I put the grease on there already, but I don't see that much in there. So we'll just put a little more. Just grease your part. Alright. You would think you'd see more grease in there than a that mosquito go by. I thought I'd maybe stick him to the grease. Guess he's not sticky. Alright, that's good for that. I'm going to wipe my hands, get my wrench, good old trusty snap-on. These are half inch uh, 
half inch square nuts in the back of these. I'll show you as soon as I get this in. good enough. Now you can see the wooden guides coming out now. I'll run it flush and then wipe off the excess grease. How that be? I think that's a good, good plan. Yeah, there's some in there too, but like I said, once that sawdust gets blasted through there, that isn't going to make any difference. And I want some in here anyhow. Now, there's two other little brass pieces. I had to make one. The other one was. Um, in there. That's what these are. And that's once again so you don't burr that up. So the threads are going this way so I'll put a little grease in there and then kind of put that in there. Probably shouldn't have put the grease in there. This one doesn't, this one is a tight fit. I might have to run it back in. This one here is the one I just did. You can't see it. It's got a little curve on it. So this one here is a uh, little bit longer than the original. There's the curve in it, which you can't see it, but believe me, it's there. All right, that one. Let me, neither one want to go too well, do they? And there's one bolt here that's a little bit longer. One's a little bit longer, one's a little bit shorter. It's not the proper bolts, but it's it's uh, what I'm putting in there. Now maybe this thing will poke that in there. Yeah. Oh, you can hear the grease coming out. Wish this one would go in. I don't have to take that thing all the way back out, but I think I think it's it's making me gonna have to do that. Oh well, what are we at on time? 17 minutes. Well, if that's what you gotta do, that's what you gotta do. Wipe off all the excess, because it is everywhere. I'm gonna have to take this back out and run that in from the other from the inside it goes through and touches touches that it shouldn't take too long I did not know that that would not go through rag now I probably can't get that out there's a little hole in here where it comes through at and I can't see it because it's too daggone dark this is being a devil here <sighs> well come on peace this is when I would, uh, if I was editing it, I'd edit all the nonsense out. But, as soon as I don't edit, maybe I can get it to sit on the top of this and ride it in. That got it straight. I could feel it go straight. Doesn't want to go in there. <clears throat> well, that's rude of it. All right, I'm gonna put that in after a bit because <clears throat> I kind of want to show you how to how these are supposed to be adjusted. What you want to do is you want to leave it so it go go in and out about a quarter of an inch. Let me run this in here. 
I will put that piece in. I'll probably put it, take it over, and get it so so it goes in this way because that's, that's what it's supposed to do. But as they get hammered down, they get opened up just a little bit. All right. All right. Let's say your saw blade. Let me make sure you're in there. I gotta get some of this grease off my hands. I can't do nothing. Let's say your saw blade is in in between that little piece. All right, you've got to bring it up to speed. You got to bring it up to speed. Once you got it up to speed, then you want to bring this one in till it's just touching it. Till it's just touching it when it's up to speed. Then you shut your saw off. Okay. And then you're going to shut, bring this one in with this adjustment here. You're going to tighten this off till that, that, till that brass piece hits that so this won't turn. Then you bring this one in to where it's touching, just barely touching it on this side. So now you, you've, you've brought this one up to speed and you're touching on this side. Okay. Then you want to shut the saw all down, bring the blade to a stop, run this in until you have you know maybe five thousandths of an inch clearance in there maybe more it depends on what you're happy with whatever you're happy with is whatever you're happy with and then you tighten that one up okay after you got that tightened up then you're done this nut back here should be should be tightened by that time and then if you decide that you want to pull the blade out because maybe the maybe it's leading out a little bit or leading in or it's not exactly where you want it you can move it a hair but you're not really supposed to do that because what you're doing is giving the blade a chance to heat up. You want it to ride where it's at. You want it to have the, um, I can't think of what, uh, run and run, it's not run in, run out. I can't think what I'm, it's tough when you get senile, you forget the lead. You want to have the lead already adjusted to what you want. Once you have the lead adjusted, which is the angle of the blade, which is, you know, very small amount, maybe a 32nd of an inch, a 16th of an inch, you have that adjusted, bring it up to speed so it touches there, and then turn it off, bring it in, get your gap in you want, and if, if it's, you find it's leading a little bit in and out, you might have to, that's what this is meant for. So you can sit there, see how this, so you can move your, adjust your lead, you can't, if you see it down here, you can adjust your lead in and out, but that keeps your gap the gap the same. So that's kind of how this thing's supposed to work. Greasy and all. Now I can't even turn the camera off. Eh, I'm gonna turn the camera off. If you enjoyed this video, you know, do do me a favor and hit uh, the like button, hit the subscribe button, and um, send it to a friend if you know somebody that's into sawmills. I'll wipe it down, wipe my fingers, and. Um, I appreciate you stopping by and looking for the looking at the watch. I'm gonna put this, I guess, on the on the I'll put you putting this on the number one frick tomorrow, weather permitting. Alright, over now. We'll see you later.